How's it going everyone? Today we are doing the ultimate beginner's guide on 3D printing your own soft plastic lure molds. My goal for this guide is to take someone who has no knowledge of 3D printing and for them to be able to make their own mold just like this. In this guide we're going to go over the basics of resin 3D printers, how they function, and we're going to take a 3D file on a computer and turn it into a physical mold just like this. We are also going to cover why you would want to 3D print your old molds in the first place. And I'm going to try to answer a bunch of questions that I've gotten before on previous videos. This video will not cover how to make the actual soft plastic lures. I think that's too much for one video. If that's something you guys are interested in and you don't know anything about it, I'm going to leave a beginner's guide of doing that in the description below this video. So to start this guide off, why resin 3D printing? There are quite a few different types of 3D printers. Unfortunately, none of them are quite like a normal paper printer where you just have something you want to print and you press print and it's done this is as close to that as it possibly gets it's way easier than other types of 3d printing it's cheaper than most of them and this type of 3d printing makes molds that are as good if not very close to traditional cnc aluminum soft plastic lure molds I think in order to understand how to make your own molds, it's going to be very helpful to go over how these machines work and all the different parts. That way you can diagnose any problems you have. It's much easier when you have an understanding of how the machine works. So we're going to go over this really quick. This is not the machine I currently use. The one I use is very similar. This is an older one I had that's just smaller, so it's easier to show off. Plus, I have a whole setup for mine. We'll get into that setup later in the video. Keep in mind, most 3D resin printers look very similar, so it should be the same even if you get a different machine, or very close to at least. 3D resin printers use a resin that cures using UV light. So rather than like an epoxy resin, which most people are familiar with, that cures over time, this resin's a liquid until ultraviolet light hits it, and then it becomes a solid. So all this top cover does is block out the UV light so it doesn't cure inside the machine when you're not using it. We're going to take this off, and then this is the actual functioning machine. So the more detailed explanation on how these work is there's a UV lamp inside this machine, and that's what cures the resin. This lamp just turns on and off, so if it, there were nothing else to this, it would just cure a solid brick of resin in there. However, there's an LCD screen in there. This LCD screen creates a reverse two-dimensional image of your model you're making, in this case, salt plastic lure mold. So layer by layer, slice by slice if that makes more sense it'll block out the entire uv lamp besides what the actual model shows and it'll go layer by layer by layer until you have your full mold this is the resin vat that fits in here it just slides right in your 3d printer and tightens down so in here it's just a metal frame and a what's called an fep sheet so it'll happen is your build plate, which is what the model is physically attached to, will slide all the way down in, super close to that FEP sheet. It'll cure the layer. It'll pull this up, pull it off the FEP sheet, go back down for the next layer, and so on and so on until you have your complete 3D model. So after that's done printing, this will go up and down, up and down until you have your full 3D printed model. In this case, a soft plastic lure mold. You would just pull this off, and there's your mold. There's a little bit of post-processing to it, but we'll get into that later. So really quickly, we're just going to go over basic maintenance and consumable parts on this machine. It's very simple, which is what's great about resin 3D printing. So the first one you're going to have to do every once in a while, you let your printer sit for a while without using it. Some people do this after every print. I don't do it after every print. I don't think it's necessary. It's called leveling the build plate. So this build plate right here needs to be leveled to the screen. It's going to be a little different for every resin 3D printer, which is why I'm not going to go over it in detail. But what you would do is take your build plate, you put it on here. On this machine, there's a nut on top to tighten this down, so it's stuck on there. There's four hex keys on this build plate. You would loosen them all. There's a couple buttons you press on here that moves it down onto the screen. You put a piece of paper here, move it down, and then just retighten the bolts, press a button, and it's level. It's really simple to do. It's a lot easier than on other types of 3D printers. 
whatever printer you get, I would recommend looking up a video on how to level that specific build plane. One thing that commonly wears out, allegedly, it's never weared out on me actually before, is this FEP sheet. I know sometimes they do get punctured, but when this moves up and down, it's pulling the resin print on and off of the sheet. It cures to it every time and you have to rip it off. Eventually these do wear out. Each model has a different way to replace it. There's just a bunch of screws. You unscrew it and then put it back in. That's it. It's, it should be pretty simple. Like I said, I've never had to do it before. And if you're just printing resin 3D printed molds, you probably won't have to do it either, unless you do it for a really long time. The final allegedly consumable piece on a resin 3D printer is the screen. So that UV lamp underneath does do damage to the screen eventually. I did the math on the lifetime for this machine. I don't remember exactly, but it was a ridiculous number. I think if you printed 120 molds, individually on this machine the screen would wear out that's only printing one mold at a time i think you guys are good i don't think you're ever going to have to replace the screen one advantage to go into about resin 3d printing is since it cures the entire layer at the same time unlike other 3d printers no matter how many molds you put on here it's only going to take the time to cure one half of the tallest mold so if I just printed this both halves, and then I wanted to print this saltwater grub mold too, it's going to take the exact same time as just printing one half of this mold. So I think now would be a great time to go over the difference between a CNC aluminum mold and a resin 3D printed mold. Now full disclosure, I do not have any aluminum molds on hand. Why? Because I've never bought one. I've never felt the need, which should be a good pro for this. So number one, CNC aluminum molds are going to be much stronger. If you drop this, it might break, it might not. I don't know. This resin, it's, it's not weak, but it is brittle. So definitely if I threw it against the wall, it would break. Another thing is that these molds are not nearly as rigid as an aluminum mold. So if you do clamp these together, it will need more clamps than an aluminum mold. If you notice, these holes are designed for quarter inch bolts to bolt them together if you don't have clamps. The bolts work fine, but if you want to save time and clamp everything together, you will need more clamps. The surface finish of these molds on a printer does not have as high of a tolerance as a CNC machine would. It's not going to make a difference with the quality of the actual lure. It's going to look identical feature-wise, like all the ribs and any scale pattern, anything like that would look exactly the same. The only difference that makes is with the finish of the lure. If you injected this exact same mold that was aluminum, the lure would come out shiny because of that surface finish as soon as you demolded it. With this, it's a little duller but most people add worm oil or some kind of scent to their lures anyway, so it's gonna be shiny either way. So I don't really count that as a difference. The last thing is these molds do take a little bit longer to cool off than an aluminum mold. That's really it for the differences. The lure quality between this and an aluminum mold, besides the shininess, is pretty much identical. Now, what can you make with a resin 3D printer? So you can really make anything, any shape you want, but we're gonna focus on soft plastic lure molds for this. You can make an injection mold. As I mentioned before, this is my saltwater fluke grub mold. So you can make a normal injection mold. You can also make an open pour mold. This is my own personal design. It's based off a brackish water flounder for striped bass. So why would you want to 3D print your own lure molds instead of just buying an aluminum one? There's a couple different reasons. Number one is cost. This is a three cavity beaver tail creature bait I made. This is again not printed on a resin printer, but it's printed on my FDM printer. However, this would cost between $15 and $20 to resin print. And it's a three cavity mold. To buy a four cavity beaver tail creature bait aluminum mold, I found one for $150. So there is a massive cost savings on 3D printing your own molds. There's a couple different situations that can save you money as well. Number one is with different size baits. So I try to save some money. Again, I'm going to show off my flute grub mold. So this has three different cavities. It's got a four, five, and six inch grub mold in there. So you get three different types of lures for the price of one mold. 
to buy this, you'd have to buy three different molds to get the same price lower. So the cost savings goes down even more. This mold is a little more expensive than the this mold to print, but this is still probably only about 25 bucks worth of resin. I will show you later how to calculate exactly how much each mold is going to cost. I also have the Trout Trifecta. This has four different lures in one mold, and this only costs $10 to print with the resin I used and the price I got it for. We have a micro paddle tail, a helgamite, and two different sizes of salmon eggs. So you get four different trout baits for $10. The last cost saving situation is going to be with open pour molds. Usually with something like this, you're gonna want more than one. So to buy an aluminum mold, not only are you paying that very expensive price once, it's not really worth it for one mold. You gotta buy at least two or three to make it worth your time. The other major benefit of 3D printing your own fishing lure molds is being able to make whatever you want. You can make your own custom design no one's ever thought of before. So I think a great way to show this off is my rain bait mold. I don't think anyone's ever made a soft plastic lure like this, let alone a mold that you can inject yourself. I made this, I took a picture of a bay anchovy, a very popular bait fish where I live, and I modeled out a physical lure to make my own custom bait from an idea in my head to a physical lure I can catch fish with. If I came up with this design and drew it out on the computer and had someone CNC this for me out of aluminum, it would cost me $800 for one mold. We're gonna go over the resin now. So a resin 3D printer needs resin to actually work. This is the media that you're making your actual mold out of. So we turn this liquid into your physical mold. The brand I use and the brand I recommend is Sariatek Sculpt. Technically, there's three varieties of this. I'm only going to recommend two of them. That's going to be Sariatek Sculpt Clear and Sariatek Sculpt Gray. So I use the Sariatek Sculpt Clear. It is semi see through, obviously. I buy it because I like the transparent molds for my YouTube channel. I think it looks really nice because you can actually see when I inject the mold filling up all the cavities. If you're just printing lure molds for yourself, I'm not going to recommend the clear that I use. I'm going to recommend the Sculpt Gray just because it is a little bit cheaper. So these are one kilogram bottles. They retail for $40 if you're paying full price. The Sariatek Sculpt Gray you can buy in a five kilogram bottle instead of a one kilogram bottle and you can get it for $32 a kilogram instead of $40. The reason we're using this resin versus anything else is this has a heat deflection temperature of up to 320 degrees. So that's the manufactured recommended highest temperature. However, I have injected these up to 380 degrees with no ill effects before. So you can most likely go a little bit hotter than they say you can. The only downside to using this resin over a normal resin is this likes to be printed at a warmer temperature these resins print much better at 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which I'm sure most of you don't find comfortable as room temperature. And I'll go over how to fix that with you in my setup for my 3D printer. I used to make all these molds. For this segment, we're going to go over what resin printer to actually buy. The two I'm going to recommend for making your own soft plastic lure molds with are both the Anycubic Photon Mono X and the Elegoo Saturn. They both have great reviews and they're one of the most popular printers on the market. All my molds have been printed on the medium sized printer. Mine is the Anycubic Photon Mono X. I'm going to show that off in a minute. But I think it's important to get the price point and then I'm going to show off everything else you need too. So both those printers that I mentioned retail for $500. However, since they're outdated models, I picked my Anycubic Photon Mono X up for $280. I know as of recording this video right now, the Elegoo Mars Saturn is $280 and the Anycubic Photon Mono X is also on sale for $300. So I would just shop around and see what printer you can get the best deal on and then buy it. Like I said, both those printers function almost identically the same and they both have excellent reviews. So we are now gonna go over my current printer setup. I'm going to apologize up front for the shaky camera. I'm filming this freehand, but this is my Anycubic Photon Mono X. This is what I've used as a resin printer for all my soft plastic lure molds. You can watch all of my videos that I've made on making my own lures. 
anything that's resin printed is printed on this bad boy. As I mentioned before, Sariatek Sculpt likes to be printed at a warmer temperature than other resins. It's not going to do well if you start printing it at room temperature, at least at room temperature that's normal for most people. So you have a couple different options there. I'm going to recommend 80 degrees is the temperature you work with. That works for me with the default settings, so that's what I'm going to recommend to you. The most obvious option right there is to just keep the room at 80 degrees, which I'm going to assume is not comfortable for most people. And it's a lot easier and cheaper to heat up a small space in an entire room to 80 degrees. So I like to avoid that. Now there is one heater. I'm not going to recommend it for this application, but they do make heaters that fit right inside the tank. It would fit in the back right here and just heat up this enclosure at 80 degrees. I'm going to go over my setup and I'm going to say why I don't think that's adequate for something like this in a minute. Now what I did was I had this already. This is a Creality 3D printer enclosure. This retails for about $70. I'm going to link it in the description. It's got plenty of space. It's very easy to put together and it works really well for this purpose. According to the manufacturer, it is fireproof. I would not test that theory, nor should you, but it's a nice feature to have nonetheless. You can make an enclosure out of anything you want. I wouldn't recommend using something flammable. Like I wouldn't throw a cardboard box over it and call it a day. Although that would work, it's probably, it's not even probably, it is a huge fire hazard. So this enclosure traps all the heat in, but we do need a way to heat this enclosure up in the first place. For that, I have this cheapo Amazon space heater. I'm going to, stupid thing. We have this cheapo Amazon space heater. I'm going to link this in the description below. It's small enough to fit in here and it heats up this enclosure perfectly well. This space heater does have a heat fuse in it, which is another safety feature. And if it gets knocked over, it also shuts off. It's got this little thing on there that shuts it off. I would recommend, even if you don't buy this, this was about $20. If you find something else, make sure it's got some safety features in there. That way, if this thing ever does overheat, it should shut off before it starts to fire. The last part I'm going to show you about the heater, which is why I have a full enclosure rather than just this little heater in here, is because I do have a spare bottle of resin placed right in front of the space heater. Now this is because for most of the molds I designed, the resin vat does not hold enough resin to heat the whole mold. That's not an issue. You can easily pause this printer and any other printer. It'll pause the print and then you can pour more resin in and then press play and it'll start right up again. However, if you do do that, this resin does need to be relatively close to the temperature that the resin inside the machine is at. So that's all fine and good. We have a way to heat up a resin printer and a resin now, so it's warm. However, we have no way to control it. Now the last part of this setup I have is a temperature control thermometer. It's got a probe running in here and I'll show you the actual unit. This is an Inkbird temperature controlled outlet. It's got the thermometer probe that's inside the machine and it's got a couple outlets on here. I have the space heater plugged into here and this machine, you can set it to whatever temperature you want. I set it to 80 degrees and it should keep everything in here at 80 degrees as well. So I hope this goes without saying, but a setup like this should not be left alone. It's a really bad idea to have a space heater running unintended. You don't have to stare at the machine the entire time, but you should definitely be in the same room. This does have redundant safety features that I've mentioned before, but you really should not leave it running unintended. Add to the safety of this machine, it's a really good idea to have a smoke detector above a machine that's running with a setup like this. The only other upgrade I really recommend, it's not really a safety feature, it's a machine protecting feature, is they make screen protectors for the screen. That FEP sheet can get punctured and the resin will leak onto the screen and that resin will cure to the screen. It's really hard to get that off. It's not a good thing. You don't want it to happen. So you should definitely buy the $10 screen protector to protect the $300 machine. That's basically it for the resin printer setup. That's all you're going to need. You can definitely spend a lot less money than I did. You just got to be creative. Use what you already have. And I'm sure you guys can figure something out. Like I said, the main point is you just want that resin heated to 80 degrees at all times. This video is turning out to be a lot longer than I originally thought it was going to be. So we're going to break this up into a three-part series. For the next part in this guide, we're going to go over the computer side of things. As I mentioned before, these printers take a 3D file on your computer and then turn it into an actual object. You can't just take a 3D file on the computer and plug it right in here and get your model. 
there is a little bit of work on the computer that needs to be done. These machines don't know what they're doing. They just follow instructions. So we need to turn that 3D file into a set of instructions for this machine using what's called a slicer program. In the next part of this guide, we're going to go over where to actually get the files to make your own molds. And we're going to run them through a slicer program on our computer and get them ready to print. And then part three of this guide, we're going to take our set of instructions from part two, put it on our machine, and I'm going to walk you through all the steps of printing your own mold. If there's something I didn't cover well enough for you and you have some sort of question, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer it. If you're looking for more information, I'm also going to post a couple relevant videos down in the description below just going over the basics of resin printing. And I'm also going to post my soft plastic lure making series so you guys can see what I made with my machine and that you guys can make too. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in part two.